Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to talk to you about magic commands in Jupyter and in IPython, which is the textual version of Jupyter or the predecessor to Jupyter. So what am I talking about? Well, when I type something and execute it in Jupyter, like print, hello, what's actually happening? Well, what I type is being sent back to Python somewhere in a backend process. It's being executed there. And then I see the result on my screen here. So far, so good. Magic commands are a little different though. Magic commands are interpreted by Jupyter, and then either they do something to Jupyter itself, or they're translated to something else that is then sent to the backend Python process. Now, how does Jupyter tell the difference between a regular command and a magic command? Magic commands all start with percent, and percent, of course, is not allowed to be in a Python variable function or class name. So if I say here, percent, well, actually, let's start off with something real. If I'm going to define three variables here, or several variables, I'm going to say x equals 100, y equals 10, 20, 30, z equals a, 10, b, 20, c, 30. And then I'll say here, def, hello, name, return, hello, name. Great. So I've defined three variables and one function. And remember, functions in Python are actually variables. So hello there is not in a separate namespace. Hello is actually a variable just like everything else. It just happens to be a function object rather than an integer, a list, or a dictionary as we have here. So I want to know what variables I've defined. And I can use the magic command who. And percent who, because it starts with a percent, it is seen as a magic command. And if I type this, look at that. I get hello, x, y, and z. This will show me all the variables that I have defined. It's not going to show me all of the global variables. So it's not going to show me all the globals that Python set up. It's not going to show me everything that built ins uh, um, namespace. It's just going to show me things that I have defined. If I import something like import random, and I do who, I keep saying who's, we'll get to that in a moment. Then you'll see uh, we have hello, random, X, Y, Z, and so on and so forth, right? We have all of our things there. That's great. But what if I'm only interested in some of them? I can say percent who int or percent who int list. And I can say which types I'm interested in seeing and getting. That's pretty snazzy, especially, again, if you have a very large number of variables defined. But, but, what if I want to get this information back into Python somehow? Well, for that, I have who ls. And who underscore ls gives me a list of strings back. And then I can say, of course, x equals, let's not do x, let's say variable names equal percent who ls. And what happens is that magic command executes, returns a list, and now if I look at variable names, sure enough, we have the list of strings. And I can play exactly the same game as I did before, where I can say here, who ls of int, and now my variable names will only contain x, or who ls of int and dict, and then variable names will only contain that. By the way, how do I check for a function, right? If I do like who or who ls, I such as a function, and even though function is not a keyword, or even in built-ins in modern Python, that's okay. Who knows what we want to do? Who knows what we want to do? <laughs> anyway, I kept typing it by mistake before, but there's also whose, and I actually happen to use this much more. And whose gives you more of a printout. It gives you three columns. It gives you the variable name. It gives you its type, and it gives you some information about it. In the case of some things, like our list and our dictionaries, it'll tell us how long it is. In the case of a, um, an integer, it'll just give us the value. In the case of a string, it'll show us the value also. And in most other cases, it'll just show you what's known as the rep or the printed representation of that value. And you can play the same game here, whose int or whose you know, string. Not that we have any strings here. No variables match your request of type. And of course, whose function, and we'll be totally fine there. Okay. What if, though, my namespace has filled up with a lot of things? I just want to get rid of them. Well, for that, I can say percent reset. And percent reset, sure enough, it says once deleted, variables cannot be recovered. Do you want to proceed? And if you say yes, all of your variables are gone. So now I say whose. That's it. Interactive namespace is empty. I have not re removed the global. Well, I have not re removed all the built-ins and all the globals that Python defined. But the things that I defined are gone. But wait a second. You might have noticed along the left side here, we have all this in stuff and sometimes even out. In is a list that Jupyter and IPython create so that we can keep track of all of our inputs. And I can look at in and see the list of everything that I've typed so far. I can look at out and get all the outputs I've received so far. 
What if I want to get rid of those? Well, I can actually say percent reset of in out. I can do one or both of them, don't need to do both. Notice that here in is actually an argument to percent reset. It is not the in operator in Python. If I do this, you want to do this? Yes. And now, here's the thing. If I now say, what is an in? Is the in list deleted? The answer is not exactly. The in list still has to be of the same length so that our numbering will continue from where it left off. But the contents of in have all been zeroed out. Now we have uh, empty strings there. If I look at out, it's just going to be a bunch of empty strings in that dictionary as well. So it's not going to delete them per se. It's not going to reset them to zero, zero length per se, but it will get rid of all the contents. Um, by the way, if you just want to get rid of some things, you can say percent reset selective, and then you can choose which variables you want. Use a, you know, use a regular expression to remove some variable names. Okay, let's just do that here. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to go above here. I'm going to say, let's do this quickly, first name equals Ruben, and last name equals learner, and uh, URL equals uh, learner CLL, all right? And then we can say here, oh, I don't know, that's good enough, right? And now if I say reset selective dot star name, you want to do this? Sure. And now if I say booze, you'll see that only URL is left because I got rid of all the things that start with name, dot star name. One last thing is, let me redefine these. One last thing is, let's say if I want to search through variable names, I can use percent p search. And that is again a magic command. And here it's not a regular expression, but rather a glob like expression, sort of like on the command line shell. So if I now say p search of star name, look at the bottom here, it found first name and last name. It's not going to search in the contents. It's just going to search in the things themselves. And what if I do a P search of capital name? Well, that's not going to work because it doesn't match. But I can say minus little i. And if I say minus little i, then it will find it because that makes it case insensitive. Anyway, these are just a few of the magic commands that IPython and Jupyter provide. I'm going to come back soon with lots, lots more magic commands because these really are the key to understanding and working well with Jupyter. If you have questions, comments, thoughts about any of this, please, please let me know. I'm always looking for new topics to do videos on, and I love hearing from you. Subscribe for more. I'll be back soon. Thanks for watching.